to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Recognitions and presentations, Dr. Streeter. You guys want to join me? We have some fun celebrations tonight. I'm gonna to have uh, Abby Francis join me up front, please. And <clears throat> so our first recognition this evening is Ms. Abigail Francis, the band director at Mountain View High School. Abigail was selected as a finalist for the 2024 University of Arizona Amazing Teacher of the Year. She was selected by a committee of educators and community members as one of nine high school amazing teacher finalists representing Southern Arizona schools. Mountain View principal, Mrs. McCraley stated that with a sweeping reputation as a powerful instructional leader, transformative program director, visionary policymaker, and invested relationship builder, Ms. Francis is truly an amazing teacher. Ms. Francis has an exceptional ability to draw out the very best of all of those around her. The music program at Mountain View has experienced remarkable growth under Ms. Francis' leadership. The increase in program membership in the marching band by 140% and indoor percussion by 200%. That's impressive. We can... This speaks volumes about her ability to inspire her students and cultivate a sense of belonging and achievement. However, her leadership extends well beyond the band room as she holds critical roles in the fine arts department, the school's building leadership team, and as the school representative for the district teacher evaluation committee, all of which emphasize her versatility and commitment to the broader school community. Community awareness and involvement are integral to Ms. Francis' teaching philosophy. From performances at local nursing homes to collaborating with respected guests from the University of Arizona, she ensures that students are always in touch with the community and exposed to a variety of experiences. She has also organized and hosted five statewide high school marching band competitions at Mountain View. These competitions are large events that welcome as many as 30 high schools, per, uh, 30 high school performing groups and 1,500 spectators. These events also function as an amazing fundraiser for students and the band program. And last year, the event raised over $10,000. As a part of the U of A Amazing Teacher of the Year program, finalists were recognized at a pregame presentation at a University of Arizona Wildcats men's basketball game featured in a special K-Gun News 4 clip, and she received $500. Congratulations, and thank you for all you do for the students and staff at Mount View High School. All right, we are now going to recognize four teachers that recently achieved national board certification. So if I could have Jacqueline, Chrisanne, Savannah, and Jessica join me up front, please. I don't know why, but we'll do it on this side. So joining me up front are Jacqueline Beam, uh, 
Tortolita Middle School, exceptional needs specialist, early childhood through young adult. Uh, I feel like that's like some of the things that you do. <laughs> Uh, Chrisanne uh, Dutson, Mountain View High School, English Language Arts, Adolescent and Young Adulthood. Savannah Forrester, DeGrazia Elementary for Middle Childhood Generalist. And Jessica Leonard from Butterfield Elementary, Middle Childhood Generalist. You can give them a quick clap right there. <laughs> so National Board Certification was designed to develop, retain, and recognize accomplished teachers and to generate ongoing improvement in schools nationwide. National Board Certification is an, is an advanced teaching credential in which teachers have met the profession's highest standards and have the knowledge and skills necessary to advance student learning. Teachers must exhibit a deep understanding of their students, content knowledge, use of data, and assessments in teaching practice. The certification process requires that teachers demonstrate standards-based evidence of the positive effect that they have on student learning in alignment with the five core propositions. The National Board five core propositions and standards describe what accomplished teachers uh, should know and be able to do to have a positive impact on student learning. The certification identifies teachers who meet, the, who meet these standards through performance-based peer-reviewed series of assessment components. Currently, there are 18 national board certified teachers and three nationally certified school nurses in the district. Attainment of national board certification is one of the most prestigious and respected professional certifications available in K-12 education. We are incredibly proud of our staff and recognize the extensive amount of work involved in this rigorous multi-year process. So please join me in congratulating our newest nationally board certified. Head that way for the photo op. Head that way for the photo op. We all need to scooch down. Oh, you're going to move? Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, Board communications, um, I have something to read first. Um, thank you, Dr. Streeter and my fellow board members. It's been a busy few weeks. It was my pleasure to attend two exceptional student service solution team meetings, an educational service solution teams meeting, a safety solution team meeting, an IT solution teams meeting, a bond committee meeting. I'm participating in the Impact Marana program through the Marana Chamber, and I attended the National School Board Association Annual Conference with Mr. Holt and Mr. Willard. Um, I encourage everyone to support our schools, students, and staff. Anybody else have any comments? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, I was uh, at the National School Board Conference, and it was my first one, and it was really pretty pretty incredible. Um, one of the keynote speakers was Ruby Bridges. And uh, I don't know if anyone's seen that picture from Norman Rockwell of the little girl being escorted by the federal marshals during desegregation and she she really hit it on the head talking about how as a country it's not necessarily about racism although she had been it's alive and well it's bridging the aisle bridging the gap between each other and just a really positive message and then the next keynote speaker was dr tim shriver who heads the special olympics uh john f kennedy's nephew and he looked just like him and he created a thing called the dignity index where they grade politicians uh, from both sides of the aisle on how much dignity they show the other candidate and called them out. I thought it was great. Um, and just really calling people to just increase the level of uh, cooperative communication across all party aisles. We learned about local 
cost security measures for schools, um, AI cha- the AI challenges and blessings in our schools. And, um, you know, and, and, and I was there meeting board members from across the nation. Uh, I, I just realized everything that probably everyone in this room already realizes. I already knew it, too. We live in a great school district and a great city. There are so many issues that other districts and states deal with that we are really blessed to live in Marana. So thank you. It was great. Thank you. Uh, remarks from the public. Catalina Hall, would you like to come speak? Just like how's that? Great. Okay. My name is Catalina Hall, and I'm very lucky to have three grandchildren at Picture Rocks Elementary. And sometimes I have to go to pick up Luke to pick them up. And what I'm really concerned about is that the staff and teachers who assist the kids to get into the right car. You know, heaven forbid I get the wrong ones. And they are on a very narrow swath of land between the curb and the fence. And it's kind, to me, it looks kind of unsafe. Um, I'm very careful when I drive. I drive very slowly around that pickup curve. But some persons being on their phone may not. And I worry about that. Also, it, the school gets out at 2 o'clock. That's when it's the hottest any day of the year in Marana. And I think that they need more shade over where they have to wait. Because to me, it's a, it is a safety and a security issue. And I just hope you all will take a few minutes to take a look at it, maybe place it on uh, any any special committee that could take that takes this up. I don't know all that because um, my husband and I between us have five kids and and what eight and a half grandchildren. So I'm done with knowing all the committees and gr- things like that. Um, I did my turn five times for sure. So I hope that you'll get this to the right committee, take a look at it. And by the way, the Picture Rocks uh, uh, staff and teachers, and even down to the people that work in the uh, lunchroom, they're just wonderful people. And I really am glad that, that my grandkids can go there. So don't take away the pickup loop, <laughs> just take a look at it, okay? Yeah. One time I said to a principal, that's really dangerous. So he stopped it altogether. That's not what I meant. So I had to go back and tell him, no, that's, you know that's not what I meant in, in my first school district. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Next is Raina York from uh, Marana Education Association. Tough act to follow. Uh, good evening, governing board members, Dr. Streeter, senior staff, and community members. Uh, first, congratulations to the educators recognized here tonight for their national board certification. Their commitment to students is commendable and evidence of the dedication our teachers exhibit. Um, I wanted to take a moment to recognize the Moran Education Association's negotiations team and all of the time and thoughtfulness each has invested into this process. I also want to thank Dr. Streeter, Mr. Conterno, and Ms. Linsalata for their commitment to supporting educators and students through this process. This collaboration benefits the entire MUSD community, um, and we thank you. Thank you, Rena. <laughs> Superintendent's comments, Dr. Streeter. Yes, Vice President Macronis, governing board members, members of the audience, uh, as has been mentioned, it's been a busy week or a busy month, I should say, since our last meeting. Um, a couple of things just to share with the community. Uh, last night we had our bond update meeting, uh, which was a success. Uh, we were able to, to welcome several different stakeholder groups and provide some comprehensive updates on the status of some of our current projects 
as well as provide an update uh, regarding some of the summer projects that you'll see taking place around the district. Really the purpose of that meeting was to provide information, uh, but it was also to foster a sense of transparency and collaboration and reinforce the relationship between MUSD and our community. So thank you for all of those who attended. Um, Ms. Micronis had mentioned Impact Marana. It was this past Tuesday, we had another great Impact Marana day. Uh, we had the opportunity um, with, along with Ms. Co Mrs. Kaufman, uh, the Marana High School principal, who's also a part of this program, uh, to engage with and visit numerous healthcare providers and partners across the Marana community. Uh, Impact Marana is spearheaded by our local chamber, and it continues to showcase the interconnectedness of community leaders and services that make this community uh, really so unique. So I would encourage anybody who's interested in learning more about the chamber and the opportunities for Impact Marana uh, to check that out. I know that they're starting to take applications for their second cohort. Um, also, just a couple weeks ago, we saw the 2340 Foundation Celebration of Excellence Luncheon of which several awards were handed out, including our Teacher of the Year, uh, Julie Bradshaw from Estes Elementary School, our Administrator of the Year, uh, Caitlin Kaufman from Marana High School, Support Staff of the Year, Pat Southard from Marana Middle School. We celebrated our Student Scholarship winners and our Alumni Hall of Fame uh, inductees. It was a fantastic event that really brought all of our community partners together to celebrate all the great things that are happening across MUSD. I do want to give a huge kudos to Brenda and Gloria and Jan Truitt uh, for all of their hard work in, in pulling together another fantastic event. And then finally, um, you got to meet some of our newest in, uh, National Board Certified Teachers. It was back on March 23rd that I had the opportunity to attend the AZ K-12 Center's Excellence in Teaching Celebration. I want to thank Mrs. Reedy and Mr. Bain who joined me. Uh, for that event. We got to celebrate our newest nationally board certified teachers as well as some of our uh, teachers who have renewed their certification. Uh, great event really celebrating our teachers and celebrating teachers across the state of Arizona. And once again, I just I want to congratulate the 18 national board certified teachers across MUSD. And this concludes my report. Thank you. Consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'd ask if someone wants to take anything off first. Does anybody like to take anything off the consent agenda? All right. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move the governing board present the, uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Okay, the consent agenda has been approved. On to unfinished business. There's no, there's no, no unfinished business, new business. Okay, Dr. Streeter. Ms. Micronis, governing board members, members of the audience, uh, Dan Contorno has served as the chief financial officer for the past 20 years. Uh, in effective July 1st, 2024, Mr. Contorno will transition to part-time um, as we begin to transition a new chief financial officer into this role. The chief financial officer position was posted. Eight applications were received for the opening. A screening committee that included uh, one governing board member, one principal, one director, uh, two assistant superintendents and myself, vetted the applications and selected four individuals to interview. The candidates were interviewed by this committee and one candidate returned for a second and final interview with the same committee. And we are very pleased tonight to recommend Mr. Thomas Bogart at, for the position of Chief Financial Officer. Thomas Bogart currently is serving as a Chief Financial Officer for Pima JTED, a position he has held since 2021. And prior to that, he served as the business operations and data manager since 2019. Any discussion? Can I get a motion? motion yeah. Can I get a motion to approve the appointment for the chief financial officer? I move the governing board appoint Mr. Thomas Bogart as a chief financial officer, effective July 1st, 2024. 
And I second. All any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Quintero. All right, Thomas, you want to? No, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> On June 8th of 2023, the governing board approved the award of, of a request for qualifications for design build services for the new K-8 located in Gladden Farms. Um, they also um, approved, or you also approved, that I um, begin negotiations with firms in order the in, in the order of core construction, Chase building team and Concord. As you're aware, we were able to um, negotiate to terms with um, Chase building at this, all right, with core construction. Um, at this time, the district is seeking governing board approval of the first GMP, which is the gross ma maximum price um, package. Due to the nature of the industry, it is anticipated that multiple GMPs will be brought forward um, for such approval. This first men, uh, amendment to the original contract totals 4.7, um, almost $4.8 million, will be for just the earthwork, site utilities, traffic study, and long lead items, such as the elevator and then electrical switch gear they mentioned. Um, the district has been informed the total budget of this project is at or below the um, anticipated um, amount budgeted for this project, which is 40 million. We would not want to bring forward this package without assurance that the project will indeed meet that budget. We will seek final GMP approval when design work is further developed. Thank you. Can I get a motion? I move the governing board approve the construction contract amendment number one. Um, attached as Exhibit A, with core construction for the construction of the new K-8 located in Gladden Farms. I further move Dan Contorno, Chief Financial Officer, sign all related documents to execute the contract. Second, and I do have one question. Okay. So Dan, um, you know, 40 million, and we know it's coming in budget. That's the whole goal. That's the money we have. So is this first piece within the expected budget? Because sometimes at the beginning, if Things, you know, plus two or three right. percent. Where are we at on this very first package as related well, uh, to what we expect? They have not gotten into that detail of the discussion. It's they've been looking at the whole package together, and this is broken out of that. So my assumption I did not hear like, oh, this was supposed to be four point. Okay, nine. that makes sense. But okay. the targeting obviously, as you already stated. So thank you. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Mr. Con Contorno. Um, in 2006, the district entered into a site, a school site conveyance agreement for a 10 acre parcel located almost directly next to Roadrunner Elementary. This property was to serve as an elementary school for their planned community. Said land was to be um, paid for by foregoing school fees assessed um, to the community at the time of permitting. In 2023, Landmark representatives, they're the current um, developer era of that area, contact, contacted the school district with a request to rescind that 2006 agreement so that the developer could develop the, those um, 10 acres with homes as part of their new plat submittal. After discussion with legal counsel and Landmark, a mutual recession, rescission agreement was drafted for the governing board consideration, and that's what we're talking about tonight. Approving this agreement benefits the district in the future. The establishment of, the, of a developer donation agreement formalizes Landmark's commitment to pay $1,200 per lot um, to the school district when these schools are closed at, um, to escrow. This obligation is passed on to the purchasing developers if Landmark indeed sells that master plan um, community. With, with 1,857 homes, it's forecasted that the, the, the uh, Abrelos Viejos project will bring in about $2.2 million of revenue that can be used for a purpose of adding to or renovating element, um, Roadrunner Elementary potentially in the future. Um, all documents ha were obtained by, it, by our district legal counsel and they approve of these forms. And Mr. Paul Lokes is right here if we have, if there's questions that I can't answer. 
Okay. Can I get a motion? I move the governing board approve the mutual rescission agreement with Landmark Title in um, Assurance Agency of Arizona LLC and related documents. <clears throat> I further move to grant Dr. Daniel Streeter, Superintendent, and Dan Contarno, Chief Financial Officer, the authority to sign and execute documents related to this agreement on behalf of the governing board. Second. Any discussion or questions? I have some questions. Okay, Tom. So how did this come into our possession in the first place? And and that was 2006, is that yeah, right? Yeah, in 2006, it was, it was, um, it, and I, I don't remember the, I, I believe it was the previous administration and myself is um, what, met with this developer and they, they were like, we would like to give you 10 acres for a land, um, for a pro school property because we're going to have 1200 and whatever I said, 1800, 1800 homes. Um, I honestly didn't know about it. Uh, I mean, as far as the, the piece of the parcel was, I searched for Marana Unified School District, saw the name of it, and was like, where is it? And, and then we developed, or we figured out what, what was going on. Um, it's not going to be something that we're going to, it's right across, I mean, literally across the road from Roadrunner Elementary, which has capacity um, for um, the, the students that this community would generate. Right. Okay. Um, in general, so this is a, like a global comment. Whenever we're talking about land like this, it'd be really helpful to have a picture oh. of what we're talking about because I looked it up online and I could not find okay. that this. Yeah, we discussed, and this was one of the ones that we did, did discuss at that study session. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. I guess that's. And I have a comment, Dan. Are you done? Tom? Yeah. Yeah. So, so someone basically gave us land and well, now they're basically buying it back. Two point two million dollars. Um, I, I mean, would it's a, probably a different parcel, but in in a, in a layman's term, it's it's. A yeah, I would. I'm gonna that. I'm gonna try, and if Paul corrects me, that's perfectly okay. Um, I wouldn't say give. I mean, what we were giving up was the the um, impact fees. So in theory, we were going to have to pay the oh, assessed value okay. Got it. by foregoing the um, the impact. Is that correct? So in theory. They gave us land, and but we paid for it with impact fees for gone. Okay, thank you, Dan. I have a follow up. So, <clears throat> is this one of those, you know, when like they did this over in Suaro Bloom, where they, you know, when the developer comes in and makes mm -hmm. the the map of the place, you know, and makes it all, you know, bright shiny colors and all that kind of thing. They always designate some section for a school. Even though we have no intention of building a school there, that's that, that's what they you know present to the to the buyers. Yeah, although this Is one that, was actually conveyed, and maybe that was where it's actually conveyed to us. It's in our name. Yeah. So uh, whereas uh, okay. just a spot on a map is maybe a little yeah. different. I believe Sora Bloom is ours also, the same as in the same way, and we paid for that one by foregoing, and that's. Okay. All right. It's just kind of weird that the school was already there and they yeah. said, Hey, here's some land to build another school. Yeah. I believe at the time, I mean, I, I, we were offered a piece of property that we might've, <laughs> it might've been very valuable for us at that time. And at this point, it's not, it's not the same. I mean, it's roadrunner has got plenty of capacity right. and, and plenty of land to actually use the 2.2 to, possibly yeah. even address some of the new growth. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Contorno. Yeah. Um, third, the, um, the district was approached by I-10 Aver Valley Mining and Development LLC asking for permission to bring public sewer line across the, our vacant property along I-10 Frontage Road located between Twin Peaks and Aver Valley. Um, it's on the west side of the highway. This agreement would allow sewer line to be buried across the front of the district property and continue to their property located on Aver Valley Road. This will not hinder free future use of this property, but rather it benefits the district by providing a near, nearby sewer, um, public sewer line 
um, that the district could access without having to pay for the line in the future. It is anticipated this will improve the value of this parcel. All documents were again obtained by our legal, district legal counsel and they approve of these forms. Can I get a motion? I move the governing board approve the temporary construction easement agreement with I-10 Aver Valley Mining and Development LLC and related documents. I further move to grant Dan Contorno, Chief Financial Officer, the authority to sign and execute documents relating to this agreement on behalf of the governing board. Second. Any questions or comments? Just a question, why aren't we, why aren't we sharing this honor with Dr. Streeter? Like we did the last time. I, we did. <laughs> I think I think it's because the signature page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can add you in. I can I, I can amend the motion. <laughs> it's one less thing I have to track him down. I do have one question. <laughs> Dan, are they just gonna bury sewer? I mean it's a great deal for us. Someone's running sewer line across our property that doesn't have sewer. Are they gonna leave us any stub outs or are they just gonna bury it in, in the future I, that that I believe it'll just go through. Yeah, which still is great. Yeah. Saves us. Well, and we can, lot. if I'm not mistaken, you, we may have conversations that maybe that's something they could do. Bring some stub outs or some risers. I mean, because for them, the dirt's open, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have some kind of an access would save us money in the future. We can have those discussions. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Mr. Goligowski. Good evening, Vice President Macronis, members of the Governing Board, Dr. Streeter, and members of the audience. I'm sharing five policy changes that reflect recommendations made by the Arizona School Boards Association. The changes are a result of alignment to changes in statute made by the state legislature and Congress. Policy EBAA, Reporting of Hazards Warning Systems, the revised policy updates the information that is required to be detailed in a notice to apply pesticides at school campuses and district facilities. Pest control companies still need to notify the district 72 hours before application, but the new statutes referenced in the memo provided in your packet provide specific information on what needs to be detailed in the notice. Policy EBC on emergencies, this policy was updated to mirror language and statute regarding emergency response plans. The governing board will collaborate with the superintendent to develop and maintain district emergency response plans and coordinate plans with local first responders. The plan will be maintained by the superintendent, but they are no longer required to be approved by bo the board annually. Policy ECB, building and grounds maintenance, new legislation no longer requires districts to have an indoor air quality plan. The superintendent will designate an individual who will develop and implement inspection, maintenance, repair, use, and disposal of chemicals and other materials. Policy EEAA, walkers and riders. This revised policy states that a governing board may provide students who do not reside in an established attendance zone transportation limited to 30 miles each way. The mileage language was changed from 20 miles to 30 miles to conform with the statutory language. And the last one, policy GBEF, staff use of digital communications and ethical device or electronic, <laughs> electronic devices. This policy um, removes references to outdated devices like Blackberries and removes Twitter as a reference um, because now it's called X. Forgot to mention MySpace. My oh yeah, MySpace got <laughs> eliminated as well. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> that makes it officially gone. It is <laughs> officially gone now <laughs> by policy. <laughs> so. Can I get a motion? I move the governing board approve uh, revisions to policy EBAA, reporting of hazard warning systems, policy EBC, emergencies, policy ECB. Uh, buildings and grounds maintenance and policy EEAA walkers and riders. Oh, and there's one that's not on here. Yeah. GB. And policy GBEF. Yeah, I hurt my thumb on a black gray once. Oh. I'm typing too much, but I give a second. Okay. 
Any discussion or questions? Just a quick question on the um, walkers and riders. So does that mean that that we could bus open enrollment? Right, right. Yeah, it could. It's just outside of any of the established, um, any of our boundaries and so forth. So, yeah, and that was by federal code. So it's in compliance with, I think, the um, legislation that specifies, you know, providing school lunches and transportation. So is that something that we ever talk about? But, you know, uh, giving open enrollment kids. It, it's a discussion that can be uh, had this specific policy. So right now in our policy, the language is there for up to 20 miles. This policy changes that to 30 miles. And then it's it's what's interesting about open enrollment is there's some instances where you do bus open enrollment students. Uh, for us, it's more of a tuition based. If you think about our Ultra Valley students who are tuitioning in. One of the agreements that we do have with neighboring districts is to not run buses into their attendance areas. So not to run buses into Amphi in return, they don't run buses in our area. Um, another area is um, Red Rock. We, we don't run buses into Red Rock. So it's, it's kind of a, it's an agreement that school districts make, but it's within the board's purview to make the determination if we run those buses. Okay, All right. thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Mr. Bain. Vice President Mike Cronus, members of the governing board, senior staff, members of the audience. I'm here to discuss, also here to discuss proposed ASBA, ASBA policy advisory changes. Uh, this for policy JFABDA, admission of students in foster care. The supporting documentation attached to this memo outlines the policy changes to be considered and focuses on the following, uh, including a five-day timeline for the best interest determination hearing to take place, scheduled by the Child Welfare Agency, setting a timeline of two days for a, foster child, a child in foster care to be enrolled at a new school, and eliminating the possibility of outstanding fees or fines delaying this process, adding that a notice to provider may be required upon enrollment, establishing two business days, a two business day timeline for completing a school to school records request. Adding assurances that a child in foster care receives transportation and if it is in the best interest of the child and if it's feasible, if it's in the best interest of the child and feasible. And this may include coordination and information shared with a sharing with a child welfare agency such as DCS, uh, the Department of Education and local education agencies. Uh, these changes align with uh, state statute and uh, have also been reviewed and approved by MUSD's legal counsel. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? I move the governing board approve the recommended revisions to policy JFA BDA, admission of students in foster care. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Dr. Streeter. Vice President McCronis, governing board members, members of the audience. Uh, the following policies that I'm bringing tonight are being revised based on the recommendation of the Arizona School Boards Association. These changes are really a result of alignment to current practices, some legal reference updates, as well as alignment with statutory language. There's not a lot of substantive changes to the policies. It's mostly cleanup. And then, like I said, aligning to what our current practice is. Policy BEDB, which is the agenda, the district email address has been added as an acceptable method of communication. Policy BGE and BGER is the policy communication and feedback. And this is just language that's been updated in our policy and revised to align with what our current practices in the district are. And then policy CFD is school-based management. This is our student councils. Um, and this is just the way that the statute is read, it does not specify the number of members on school councils, so our policy has been revised to mirror that requirement in the statute. Can I get a motion? I move the governing board approve revisions to policy BEDB agenda, policy BGE, um, policy communication feedback, and policy CFD, school-based management student councils. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, 
At this time, the governing board needs to go to an executive session. Can I get a motion? I move we move into executive session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We will be going to executive session. We will come back at that time and close the meeting. Um, as so at this time, you're free to go. Uh, thank you so much for attending.